Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. This will be part seven in my series on the possible fulfillments of Bible prophecy in this new year of 2014. And the reason I say possible is because even though God has planned these chastisements for this year, don't forget, he also planned the destruction of Nineveh. However, the people of Nineveh repented and God relented. Now, in part one of this series, I talked about the possible destruction of Jerusalem in this new year of 2014. And in this program, I want to talk about who may cause this destruction. And that would be the person Daniel calls the prince in his chapter 9, verse 26. And after 62 weeks, the anointed one, now the anointed one in these end times we've already discovered, would be the prime minister of Israel, and there would be Benjamin Netanyahu, shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So this prince and the people who shall come shall destroy Jerusalem and the Temple Mount in these end times. This is an end times prophecy. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Please note that word war. This is the Daniel 9 war. And do not listen to the false prophets who say that events in the Middle East are leading up to the Ezekiel 38 war. That is total nonsense. That's a misinterpretation of this passage. This Daniel 9 war comes first. It must precede the coming of the Antichrist. In the near time fulfillment of this prophecy, the prince who came and destroyed the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD was the Roman general Titus. And the people of the prince who came with him were the Roman legions. But now who is this prince who will also destroy Jerusalem in these end times? Don't forget all of Daniel's great prophecies have both a near time fulfillment and will have an end times fulfillment. Now Daniel speaks about four other princes in his vision chapters. The first of those would be, of course, the Messiah, the Prince, who from whom the daily sacrifice will be taken away. And of course, that Prince was Jesus. He will not destroy Jerusalem. The second Prince is Saint Michael the Archangel. He is another Prince who I doubt very much will destroy Jerusalem. His goal is just the opposite. However, there is a third and fourth prince in Daniel chapter 10, verse 20, who we need to take a look at, because I believe we will find that one of these princes is indeed the end times prince who will destroy Jerusalem, very possibly in this year of 2014. And he said, Do you know wherefore I am come to you? Now the I is the archangel Gabriel and he is addressing himself to the prophet Daniel. And now I will return to fight against the prince of the Persians. Now, the prince of the Persians, whom Gabriel is struggling against, was King Cyrus. But in the end times, who is this prince of Persia who will struggle against Gabriel? Don't forget, all of Daniel's great prophecies have both a near time fulfillment and will have an end times fulfillment. And when I was gone forth, see the prince of Greece shall come. So here's the second prince in this passage. Who is this prince in the end times? The prince Daniel was speaking about for the near time fulfillment was Alexander the Great. He succeeded Prince Cyrus as the master of the world. Notice how differently Daniel treats these two princes. In the near time fulfillment, 
Alexander the Great was far greater than King Cyrus. But here he is just a footnote. And I believe the reason is because in the end times, the prince of Greece will be far less important than the prince of Persia. I am going to suggest that the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece in these end times are the same as the two great leaders of the world today, Vladimir Putin and Barack Obama. Notice this action takes place in the Middle East, just as in the end times. And notice that the struggle between Gabriel and the Prince of Persia, that is between Putin and Gabriel, is far more important and there is no struggle between the Prince of Greece and Gabriel. And we are seeing this prophecy of Daniel fulfilled before our very eyes. The Prince of the Greeks in the end times, Barack Obama, will not succeed in entering the Middle East. He backed the rebels against Gaddafi in Libya, and they turned around and stabbed him in the back at Benghazi. He supported the rebels against Mubarak in Egypt, and the new president of Egypt is making arms deals with Putin of Russia. Obama is supporting the rebels against Assad in Syria, but he is going to fail there also. This prince of the Greeks never succeeds in arriving in the Middle East. The struggle is between Gabriel and the prince of Persia, and in the end times, that would be Vladimir Putin. And is this prince of Persia, that is Vladimir Putin, the same as the prince who shall come in Daniel 9.26, who destroys Jerusalem and the sanctuary? Now, if this destruction of Jerusalem by the prince of Persia, that is Vladimir Putin, and the people who will come with him, that would be the surrounding Muslim nations, begins in the year 2014, this year sometime, how long will it last? Let's look at Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of the Persians resisted me 21 days. So this struggle with Gabriel lasts for three weeks. And that symbolizes the three years of great tribulation. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there by the king of the Persians. So this great tribulation, this struggle between Gabriel and the prince of Persia, that is Vladimir Putin, lasts for the entire length of time of the great tribulation. And Daniel verifies this in his chapter 12, verse number 1. And at that time, this is the end times, shall Michael rise up the great prince who stands for the children of your people. Now your people would be Daniel's people, in other words, the Jews. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since the time that nations began, even to that time. This can only be the great tribulation that Daniel is writing about. And at that time, your people shall be saved. But notice here that Daniel adds an interesting disclaimer. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. In other words, only a remnant of Israel will be saved. These are the same as the 144,000 that John says are sealed in the book of Revelation. These are the same as Jesus said must flee to the mountains of Judea when they see the abomination of desolation. Just this morning, one of my subscribers complained that I should make it more clear that I am giving possible dates. And this is true. I don't know if Vladimir Putin will destroy Jerusalem this year or not. Remember, the people of Nineveh prayed and fasted and prevented the chastisements from Almighty God. I know one thing, this Prince of Persia cannot be the Antichrist, as some have suggested, 
because he is followed by the prince of the Greeks. And that's why Daniel includes that short passage about the prince of the Greeks. And not everything is bad news for Israel. Obviously, Daniel is telling you that even though these tribulation trials will be the worst in the entire history of mankind, both Archangel Michael and Gabriel will be assisting you. God has not forgotten the Jews in these end times. And at the end of the Great Tribulation, at the Battle of Armageddon, not only will the Antichrist, but all those who support him, such as Vladimir Putin and Barack Obama, will be cast into the Lake of Fire. And as always, please don't forget to visit my new thirdeaglemedia.com website, where I have unraveled all the prophecies of Daniel especially as regarding the abomination of desolation. You cannot understand Daniel as he is printed in your Bibles because those prophecies are sealed up. All of his verses and chapters must be rearranged if you want to understand the end times prophecy. And Jesus said we must read and understand Daniel. And while you are on my website, please don't forget to hit the PayPal button if you want to help to support my YouTube ministry.